Okay. Uh, I was looking at the, the, the counter. We, we sort of ratcheted up to about 87. I think there were a lot more people who came in and came out of the, the meeting today, but uh, I think probably quite well over 100 people have joined this webinar this afternoon. So so that's a really great result. And uh, it just shows the, the interest that is uh, in this technology. I think three key takeaways that I wrote down are the, the, the potential for using this kind of system to decarbonize industrial heat. We've got a high temperature system operating at low pressure, and there really is a, a wonderful potential to, to go and uh, address the, the difficult to decarbonize areas in industrial heat. Um, the other thing which, which many of the people talked about is the potential of, the, of buffering uh, using molten salt for flexibility with renewables. Um, so uh, we can store molten salt in, in vats and then use that storage to uh, to buffer the, the energy system and um, have a, a great story there about the compatibility with renewables. And the other really important thing, I think, which Ian Scott said was um, for corrosion, the really important thing is to get the chemistry of the salts right. And I think that's a really, really important message as well. So I hope that we've created an event today which was of value for all those who contributed and participated. It took a bit of time to prepare, but the advantage of a webinar is that it can be done for a cost of zero euros. And that's great because the revenues of our association are exactly zero euros. <laughs> uh, the, the companies and technologies we have seen are all about getting across the valley of death between a conceptual design and a commercial product which is successful in the market. And the ones which offer the best compromise between high value, low cost, and quick implementation are the ones which are going to make it across that valley. An important point about molten salt reactors is the enormous diversity between the different concepts. I like this uh, taxonomy plot, which was made a couple of years ago by Aslak Stubbsgaard, the CTO of Copenhagen Atomics. Uh, if you start in the middle, you can see that molten salt reactors can have a fast or a thermal neutron spectrum, a fuel salt, which is a mixture of fluorides or chlorides, a coolant, which is the fuel salt itself or might be something else, a fuel cycle based on a plutonium uranium, uranium thorium, or transuranics obtained from spent fuel, or a mixture of transuranics and thorium. And that's just from the point of view of the physics and the chemistry. On the engineering side, you could add the power output. Is it a gigawatt scale or SMR with hundreds of megawatts or a micro reactor on the scale of tens of megawatts? The type of power conversion system, are you using steam or supercritical CO2 or something else to, to run a turbine? And then there's the type of customer. Are you making industrial or domestic heat? Are you making electricity? or energy carrying molecules like hydrogen or ammonia? Or is the power station producing some hybrid of more than one of these energy products? There are dozens and dozens of different molten salt reactors. Here are the seven that we've looked at today. They all have a different take on the basic concept of a liquid fueled reactor. There is no one best solution. They all have their advantages and disadvantages. But there is plenty of room in the trillion dollar global energy market for all of these technologies. And we're going to need all of them to cover the requirements of the growing market and the necessary energy transition which is before us. And indeed, there are many areas where competitors may need to work together, such as regulation, uh, testing, and fuel cycle development. As the technology gathers pace, there are going to be other startups which don't yet exist. There are already lots of people lined up on the slopes of the Valley of Death who are looking over to the promised land on the other side 
trying to figure out how they're going to get across. And some of them are going to make it. So you could think of each molten salt reactor that gets built a bit like a tennis tournament. It's a finite game with a beginning and an end, and there can be only one winner. To win a tournament, you've got to be really, really good. And each tournament is always going to be fiercely contested. But the worldwide tennis circuit is a bit like an infinite game. There are lots of tournaments every year, some more prestigious than others, some have more prize money than others, but there's plenty of space there for each of the really good players to win a tournament from time to time. And so the rivalry between players pushes each of them to new heights. If you're a player like Federer, Djokovic or Nadal, then every time you lose a match, you're thinking, what have I learned? How can I be even better next time? How can I work on my weak points? And so if you look at your rivals as people that you can learn from, then you start to see the value of being part of that community. So I think that it's important for the different companies in this molten salt reactor community to see each other not as competitors to be eliminated, but as healthy rivals. So all that remains is to say an enormous thank you Firstly, to all the companies who've presented today, we know that your time is precious, so thanks for all your effort. And secondly, to everyone who participated for being with us this afternoon, if you found it interesting, if you learned something, then please tell others. And you may also want to consider joining Progrès Nucléaire. People often say to us that molten salt reactors are probably the way forward, but that they can't talk about them. You know who you are. Please do your coming out and encourage others to do their coming out too. So I'm sure that there are going to be lots of other opportunities to bring the molten salt reactor community together. It's time to wrap this one up, but I for one can't wait to see you all again next time. Thank you, and see you again soon. Thank you, everyone.